Hunters like you blaze the path for the rest of us. Double down. Triple down. Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we're going to discuss and review the sleek and oh so sexy and quite exclusive auto rifle known as the Blue Perfect. First of all, let me just be very, very clear in the way in which you get this thing, and the way in which you obtain it is by number one, just simply playing the game and ranking up your season pass, and at rank 30, that's precisely when you're going to be able to obtain this Blue Perfect. Of course, when it does happen to drop, it's going to have some RNG perks on there, and it might be a gob roll, and it might just be the definition of Muff Cabbage Trash shenanigans, and you don't want that, I don't want that, nobody wants that. So what we're going to try and do instead is we're going to unlock the scrounger perks, these I think that's how you say it, at rank 73, 83, and 93 in our season pass. Those are then going to correlate to Crucible, Gambit, and Vanguard respectively, and that's then going to increase the chances of having this auto rifle drop and one of those three activities as you then complete those ranks. Now that you guys know how to get your hands in this thing, you're probably asking yourselves, okay, well, what's this weapon's effective range? What's its overall bullet magnetism like? Is it good in its TTK or is it terrible? Is it going to have some really good base stats? What kind of perks can I roll with? And all that kind of jazz. And so that's exactly what we're going to get into this very second. So without any further delay, the only thing we have to do is just to simply sit back, relax, eviscerate that notification button, and let's jump right into the video. As many of you know by now, one of the very first things that I love to do when I get my hands on these beauties is I love to look at the weapon's TTK stats. And in order for us to do this, we have to understand the weapon's damage output. And so by now, you've probably already realized that it's doing 36 points of damage in the head and 22 points of damage in the body. Looking at solely body shots and body shots alone, the weapon's then going to take 9 body shots, which is then going to associate to a 1.33 second of body shot time to kill. Upon first inspection, that may not sound too great, but when we get to the weapon's optimal time to kill, it's then going to take 5 crits and 1 body to associate to a 0.83 second optimal time to kill. I know I said a lot of information in a very short amount of time, so just that we're all on the same page, here's all the weapon's information right there on screen. And so the main thing that I want you to take away from this is that all these computations were done with a Guardian at 9 resilience, aka 198 points of health. Something else that you might have noticed there is that this thing has a rate of fire at 360 rounds per minute. You might be thinking to yourself, Xander, that's kind of slow. Why the heck would I want to use a rate of fire weapon that's going to be that freaking slow? And to you, I say let me put this into retrospect for you, because something like that of a spare rations or a sunshot has an optimal time to kill at 0.8 seconds, but something like a kill in the orchid or maybe an ace of spades has an optimal time to kill at 0.87 seconds. Furthermore, another auto rifle that's in the 450 rate of fire archetype is something like a bright tech werewolf, and that thing with its base TTK is at 0.93 seconds. And so in this respect, we can really see that this Blue Perfect is actually doing quite well in contrast to some other weapons. Luckily for us, this weapon's optimal time to kill and body shot time to kill can get even better, and that's because it can roll with either a Rampage or a Kill Clip. And no oh boy, do I got a surprise for you that just might make enemy guardians a little bit salty. Whenever you happen to have Kill Clip proc on this Blue Perfect, it's doing 47 points of damage per crit and 30 points of damage per a body. Looking at solely body shots and body shots alone, it's then going to take 7 body shots, which is going to be precisely a 1.0 second body shot time to kill on the dot. When we analyze the weapon's optimal time to kill, this is where things get very, very interesting, because this thing only needs 3 crits and 2 bodies to then get its optimal time to kill at 0.67 seconds. Yes, my friends, you heard me right, I said 0.67 seconds, and just like from before, I'm going to put all that data right there on screen. Please note that all these computations that you see right there were done with a Guardian at 10 resilience, aka 201 points of health. And this then means to you that even if you have me going up against a maxed out health resilience Guardian, that's still fine because this thing is going to do exactly this. And it also has some very good leniency to still get the optimal TTK with only needing 3 crits and 2 bodies. A lot of the times, Many weapons don't have that kind of leniency, at least with the weapon's optimal time to kill. But for the Blue Perfect, that's not the case. And in reality, this thing is going to be quite easy to use and still get that very good optimal time to kill at 0.67 seconds on a much more frequent basis. Just to take that one step further, I want you all to remember that the Recluse without Master of Arms Proct has that base optimal time to kill at 0.67 seconds. 
We also have to remember that even when you happen to have a kill clip on the Sicker Providence, for example, or a kill clip on the Braytag Werewolf, each one of those two things is still going to have their optimal time to kill at 0.67 seconds. And so to you, I say that this Blue Perfect is still very, very competitive with other weapons, especially when they happen to have kill clip rot, and that is something significant to note. And having seen all this data and hearing those comparisons, I think that you guys now kind of get a sense as to how lethal that this Blue Perfect can really be. But the very next thing that I have to show you is the rule that I happen to have, and you guys can see that right there on screen. It's got Kill Clip, Slyways, Flared Magwell, Hammer Forge Rifling, has a Handling Masterwork, and a Counterbalance Mod. Personally, I love this role, and that's because it has that high lethality with Kill Clip, but more importantly than this, it also has some really good perk synergy, because Flared Magwell is not only going to increase my stability, which this thing desperately needs, and you'll see that more later in just a couple of seconds via the weapons based stats, but it also is going to increase that weapon's reload speed, and that's great to then proc Kill Clip. Simultaneously, I then got Slyways, and with Slyways, I'm not only going to increase my weapon's overall accuracy, but it causes that increase in quote-unquote accuracy by boosting the weapon's handling speed and stability, all while simultaneously reloading a portion of the weapon's magazine every single time that I slide. For my particular hyper-aggressive playstyle, that perk fits me to a T and I wouldn't have it any other way, but it also happens to have some great range which we'll also see in just a couple of seconds, along with that good handling master to increase the ADS speed, and last, but certainly not least, is what I put on for a mod, and that is a counterbalance mod. Now, some of you might be scratching your head and thinking, Xander, what the heck are you doing? Why would you want to put on a counterbalance mod on this thing when you could probably put on a targeting adjuster instead and increase the weapon's overall aim assistance? To really understand the menace behind the logic, we gotta look at the weapon's base stats, and you guys can see those right there on screen. With my perks taken into account, you guys can tell that this thing has a range factor at 85 out of 100, which is just crazy and mind-boggling, but it's got a despicable and detestable stability stat at 29, and arguably some of the more important stats that are hidden on this thing is the aim assistance at 54, which is just mediocre, with that recoil direction, which is phenomenal at over 100. Now, the reason why that recoil direction is literally over 100 is because of that one counterbalance mod. And the reason why I want this is because this thing has a very significant overall recoil, and so I want that recoil to be much more predictable, and I also want it to be much more consistent. And thus, in order to have that happen, it's got to have only vertical recoil and vertical recoil alone, and that's why once again, I have on that counterbalance mod, increasing it to over 100 by plus 15. Now normally, when we're talking about a weapon's shot rhythm, of course recoil direction is definitely going to come into play here, but so is aim assistance and stability. And in this respect, the Blue Perfect really isn't that great. But what I will say that makes up for it, at least in this respect, is having that significant and crazy and oh so out of this world range factor at 85. As you probably already suspected, range is great for increasing the weapon's damage fall off and longer distances. But much more important than this is the weapon's bullet magnetism at close and long range distances. And these two things is precisely what we're going to test this very second in private matches. First up, is the weapon's optimal effective range. And as I take out my Darcy, I'm aiming at my very good friend Mach Flux at precisely 30 meters. You guys see as to what's expected, 36 points of damage per crit. But then when I do this exact same thing one more time, I just simply go back one more meter, and lo and behold, we happen to get this thing at 35 points of damage per crit. The key thing to take away from this is that this weapon's optimal effective range is then at 30 meters. But I also want you to keep in mind that the one thing that I have to increase this weapon's base effective range is Hammer Forge Rifling, and thus that's going to increase it by 10, whereas the base stat is still at 75. Now, although 75 is very, very good, this effective range might differ ever so slightly for you, and it might be 1 meter, it might be 2 meters, but just remember that this is going to vary for the role in which you happen to have. Next up is the weapon's bullet magnetism tests, and so what I want to do first is measure these two things at 10 meters and 25 meters respectively. At 10 meters, you guys can tell that I literally cannot miss at all in order for this thing to really actually hit and still register that the weapon's hitting those shots. But when I went back to say 25 meters, oh yeah baby, we got some crispy, juicy, and also spicy flavorings up in here because this thing I can miss by a significant amount both on the right hand side of the head and on the top side of the head so much to the point that I was quite saying, wow, I was not expecting that at all. In some cases, I was able to miss to the right hand side of the head by like 3 or 4 sight lengths, 
and on top of the head, I was able to shoot him inside his health bar and maybe even slightly ever above his health bar and still have those shots register that they were hitting. And this then means to you that at longer range distances, you're then going to have a much greater chance of landing those crits and buy shots on a much more regular basis. However, when you're in those close range engagements, you are going to absolutely make those shots count because if you miss, then that's when you're going to have this thing punish you significantly and increase that optimal TTK and buy shot TTK significantly at those close range distances. In seeing all these test cases, I think that you guys now get a really good sense as to how this thing is going to function for you, regardless of whether or not you happen to have an aggressive playstyle, a passive playstyle, or somewhere in between. And so the next thing that's really going to decide this for you is these perk combinations on this as a whole. And so to see that, we can see all the weapons perks that I recommend right there on screen. In that very first column, we happen to have a chambered compensator, coarser rifling, extended barrel, fluted barrel, full bore, hammer forged rifling, and polygonal rifling. I'll explain what we're looking for there in just a couple of seconds, but in that second column, we're looking for things that are going to increase the weapon's overall effective range or reload speed, and that equates to high caliber rounds, ricochet rounds, flared magwell, or light mag. And suing this is the third column, and here we happen to have outlaw, rangefinder, slideways, and zone moment, followed by our last and final column to be either Kill Clip, Dynamic Sway Reduction, or Rampage. I know, I know, that was a lot of perks that we just went over in a very short amount of time. And so to you, I just want you to remember that what you're looking for, awesome and spectacular symbiotic relationship between all four of these columns. And our role that might just do that for you is the second one that I happen to get, and you guys can see that right there on screen. It's got Rampage, Rangefinder, High Caliber Rounds, along with Chamber Compensator. And the reason why I like this role is because not only does it happen to have some very good overall lethality, but on top of it, it's got some good range, it's got some great flinch factor, and furthermore, it's going to almost have that 100 out of 100 recoil direction via chamber compensator. Personally, I think that this role would actually be slightly better if it happened to have slideways instead of rangefinder. And the reason why I believe this to be so is because every single time that I slide, I'm then going to reload a portion of that magazine. And that's then going to allow me to continue to proc Rampage more and more and more, all while simultaneously giving my enemy guardians a tremendous amount of flinch. Now, if that kind of weapon doesn't fit your playstyle, then maybe what you're going for instead is something that's going to be much more consistent. And so in this respect, you might want to have something like Dynamic Sway Reduction, Zen Moment, Ricochet Rounds, and Flute of Barrel. With that kind of roll, you're going to have some crazy on this world stability via Ricochet Rounds and Zen Moment. But not just this, the handling speed is going to be very, very high with fluid barrel, and it's also going to be a true laser beam via dynamic sway reduction. No joke, that role that I just described to you is going to land crit after crit after crit, and most likely going to get that 0.83 second optimal time to kill every single time. But for some of you, you might be looking for that high lethality, and others of you, you might be looking for that range. And so no matter which kind of role that you guys happen to get, the only thing that I ask is that you think about this perk synergy and how all these things are going to correlate together so that you can have the best role that's going to fit your playstyle the best. No matter which kind of role that you guys happen to get, I hope that's exactly what you're looking for, and so let me know what you guys think about this entire review down in the comment section below. Are the weapons TTK stats good or bad? Do you want to happen to have Kill Clip or Rampage instead? All of these are questions that I want to know the answers to for you down in the comment section below, and so no matter what you guys say, you always know that I'm going to respect your opinions, and that is something that I can guarantee. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media, because you are the greatest. That's much all that I've got for you as of right now, DS Layers. As always, GG TNT.